Previously on L.A. Noir, we investigated a dead woman at a crime scene, and that pretty much sums up every episode for the last 20 or so. Here we are, the lovely apartment of Miss Evelyn. Of course, women are getting killed every darn day in L.A. Where are we off to next, Cole? Finbar, any suggestions? I guess we could check out the back alley of this dude's liquor store. Probably nothing around here, but figured it was worth a look. Finbar, we got to pick where we're going next. Does this guy have any more words for us? Got a vacuum. I like vacuums. Okay. Staff only. Fine. We'll respect. We'll respect the law. We'll respect the rules here. Let's talk to you. Tell us about. Tell us, Mr. Robbins, about your contact with Evelyn. We're trying to account for Evelyn's movements yesterday. She came by in the morning. A social visit to pick up some of her things. She had a couple of bucks and bought a quart of rye. Did she now? Hmm. Do we believe this man? I'm gonna believe him. He seems pretty darn honest. He's blinking, but I'm gonna... I don't know. Why is he blinking so much? Stop blinking. Any idea where the money came from? She didn't mention it. But she did say the booze was a present for a boy. She said they had been fighting and she had to make it up to him. Hmm relationship with the victim. Were you and Evelyn close, Mr. Robbins? How many people will be sad she's gone? I'll be one of the few. Hmm. I think you're honest. This guy seems like an honest dude. We got the impression that Evelyn had been sleeping rough of late. It became difficult for me to have her stay here. Her mother was trying to get her back on the straight and narrow. She's old now. To be honest, you have to have a good reason to want to get back on. Hmm. And any knowledge of any of McCaffrey? Do you know a friend of Evelyn's by the name of McCaffrey? Not personally. Why does he make me a little bit nervous here? He's doing the same thing he did before, but for some reason, his tone of voice and his eye. Oh, yes, doubt you! We're struggling for leads, Robbins. Did she know McCaffrey? She idolized him. From what I gather, the feeling was far from mutual. He seems to peddle a revolutionary stance, fixing the ills of society. You could see how it would appeal to down and outs like Evelyn. Thanks for your help, Mr. Robbins. No problem. Hey, I'd like to make arrangements for the funeral. You think I could get in touch with Evelyn's mother? Put in a call to the watch commander at Central Station, Mr. Robbins. He'll be trying to reach the next of kin. Thanks. Get the guy, huh? Evelyn never hurt anybody. Poor old man harboring a down and out Hollywood has been in his liquor store. So, where are we off to next, Finney? Go to the bowling alley or the bar? I kind of want to go to the bowling alley. Let's go to the bowling alley. Why not? And quickly, I want to check our clues here. So, we've got the, uh, the the rings. We've got that. We've got the handbag. The upper half of the leather. We've got the book with Grosvenor McCaffrey's name. But let's go to the bowling alley. Check it out. Grosvenor. I mean, Finbar. Not Grosvenor. Let's go. Got to Oh, right through here. Right? Yes? Exit your store. Be on our way. Go and solve this case. That guy was a nice guy. Sometimes you just gotta believe someone's honest and just say, hey, you're an honest dude. I kind of doubt him in the end because I saw that eye movement. His eyebrows and eyelids like ate his eyeballs, but for the most part, he was a pretty good guy, it seemed like. Pretty nice old man. Just chilling in his store. Dude, we're off. Off to the bowling alley. Get a quick game in. Maybe we can put up the bumper so you can get a higher score. I'm not the greatest bowler. Not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm, I'm not awful, but I'm no, like, 250 champion, 300 champ, obviously. Um, we'll go check this place out and see what's up. I'm, I'm kinda wanna, I kind of want to... I kind of like the more unique location. I mean, I don't kind of. I definitely like the more unique location. I think a bowling alley is a pretty darn good one. Raw Lane's bowling alley, 105 p.m. Hello, 
little rusty. Two on your usual lane? I'm Detective Phelps. Homicide. You must be new. <laughs> What's your shoe size? We're conducting an investigation, ma'am. Do you know the name Evelyn Summers? Sounds like I should. Oh, maybe it could be Jimmy's friend. Jimmy? James Tiernan. He's a pin set. One day he introduced me to a lady after work. It stuck in my mind. Because she was much older, too old for him. Where can we find Jimmy, Florence? He'll be hopping around the lanes toward the back. Thanks, ma'am. I like Let's Florence. Florence looks like she just crawled out of her coffin, and every day at the end of the work night, she closes it back up. She's so old, and look at that crazy blue hat. She is the shoe woman here in charge of the bowling alley. Stop smoking, it's bad for you. I'm gonna whip that cigarette right off your face. You are twice as Actually, smart. I'll whip your hair right off your head, too. It's gross looking, all right. So we gotta go. All right, well, I wanna go talk to the bartender and see what he was doing. The man at the soda fountain. Fine, we won't talk to you. Okay. You get a quick game of bowling in. It'd be very nice if I just walk down here. Oh, let's run down the lane. The lanes are very slick and oily, though, so we don't want to don't want to run on those. They look so shiny. All right, let's go. Look at that clock. It's right. It's 10, 107 now. It's been two minutes since we've been here. That's about accurate. That's awesome. It's awesome that they got the clocks all accurate and lined up too. Let's go talk to this Jimmy dude. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Tiernan, LAPD. What are you waiting for? Get after it! Another we runner. We might go faster if we weren't carrying the extra weight. Ooh. Good insult, Cole. Another These runner. flashy cars to be parked outside a bowling alley. The lanes attract a fast-living individual with money to burn. Or a middle-aged individual with the need to feel virile. Let's catch this dude. I, don't, I, I think it'd be more realistic you gotta get if there wasn't a runner every case. You know what I mean? Like, it seems like almost every case someone takes off the runner. I, I don't think that would... Hit him, Cole! Ah, I don't think out. that would happen ever. Gross. Dude, sorry. Another runner. At least we've got a suspect. Yeah, another runner. Why do they bright. always run? I'm sure we've got the wrong person in more than one of these homicides, but they always seem to land. <laughs> you know, your theories are not airtight by any means. Hey, at least Cole agrees with me that they always run. I like that. We think we think the same. Hit it. Clean this asshole off the road. I'm trying. He's got a freaking. This isn't the killer. We can at least get a brick of a car, danger. dude. That's unless he runs into a wall and saves us all the trouble. Oh my god. How is he still surviving in his car? Drive through the park. Let's go. Oh, oh. That is the end of that. Jeez. About fucking time. Yeah. Exactly. Get Hand out. Behind your head. We got you, Jimmy. <laughs> Good work, Cole. Right, that man is taken care of. Drive this little fast car. I kind of like it. Can we get in, please, Cole? Rusty? Why are you sitting in the driver's seat? Yeah, exactly. Move over. Time to go to not that. Time to go to the bar, right? Minch's bar? Yep. Boop. Guess we'll interview that dude later, back at Central. Got a little nice speed demon here. Let's take it for a ride. I like Cole, how he commented on the runners. I think that's pretty awesome. Whoa. Let's get to a high speed here. We're going very fast. Picking up speed. Hey, for 1940, this is Speed Demon. Hey, it's the RKO Theater. I don't know what that is. All right. But it gave us some experience and it slowed down our car, which is not nice. Quick turn. Boom! Oh no! Oh no! You're gonna kill us! I'm sorry. I'm not trying to. Driving's hard sometimes. All right, where's Menches? It's a nice little intersection here. 
There, I think this is it right here. Yes, Mensch's Bar, 1.16 p.m. Drink, fellas. Phelps, Galloway, homicide. We need to ask you some questions concerning Evelyn Summers. I'm Walter Mensch. Evelyn Summers, what is it now? You knew Evelyn? As well as I wanted to know Evelyn. She's a pain in the ass, always coming in here, cadging drinks, never had any money. She was in just a couple of nights ago. Did she ever tell you where she was staying? I don't know. I think she was living rough. She had that kind of stunk about her. Who did she drink with? A bunch of these guys. Ask around. All right. Well, you look like a fine, well-read gentleman. Let's ask you. What's your name? Grosvenor McCaffrey. <gasps> Mind if I ask you some questions, Mr. McCaffrey? I'm just a starving writer, detective. What do you want to ask about? Evelyn Summers and why she was found beaten and strangled in the rail depot on Santa Fe. Okay. I see your point. How well did you know her? I can't say that I knew her. It was more like I was aware of her. Hmm, Grosvenor McCaffrey. He's kind of a creepy dude. But why is Cole have to yell at everyone? Cole's like, Grosvenor, talk to me now! He could just be like, dude, I need to ask you some questions. Sit down, let's get this done. I don't think yelling is probably the best way to start out with these, <laughs> these suspects. All right, tell us about your relationship with the victim. You say you barely knew Evelyn? Yes, that is correct. I don't see how that's correct when you gave her a book of yours, you schmuck. You're lying, McCaffrey. You looked down your nose at Evelyn, but you knew her, and you have some idea of what happened. I hope you're holding aces. I'm telling you again, I barely knew the woman. We're holding quadruple aces. How about this book with your name in it, jerk? Why would you lend her your book on metaphysics if you only knew her in passing? It was more than that. A renaissance man like yourself lending his books to his acolytes. She hounded me about that goddamn book. And then she lifts it from my apartment and lies to my face that she didn't take it. As if she could even comprehend any of it. I saw her go into a hotel with Tiernan last night. They had booze in a paper bag. He's your man. Hmm, Tiernan, the bowling alley pin setter. The runner, tell us about your history of crime, Grosvenor, with your schmug face. You look like a dude from Evil Sesame Street. Do you have a criminal record, Mr. McCaffrey? Nothing serious. I've had a few skirmishes. Hmm. Hmm, yeah, I'm gonna doubt that, buddy. You wanna save me some time, or do you want me to look up your file? Industrial disputes, strikes, workers' rights. That kind of thing. A regular fifth columnist. Nice to meet you, comrade. Thank you for the information, Mr. McCaffrey. Everybody's afraid of communists here in Los Angeles. Now we got some good info. Take a little peek around the bar here. Anything going on in the back? Probably not. But I'm, I'm laying... Laying my belief here on the fact that it's probably Tiernan. I mean, granted, we can go and do something else, but I'm guessing that's going to be that guy. Actually, let's make a call. I don't know why we're making a call, but we'll go make a call. Uh-oh. Yes? A message from Captain Donnelly. Return to Central. Go to. Uh-oh. Okay. We weren't even in the car, but they they made a magic phone call to our brain cells. Gorgeous. Wonderful. Thank you guys very much for watching. You're wonderful. Have a wonderful day. Fantastic day. All hail Cola King. Hit that like button if you'd be so kind. And until next time, guys, we will see you later.